So today I'm going to talk about um, the difference between European mandrake and American mandrake because they're two entirely different genus and species from two entirely different botanical families with different magical and therapeutic and and theogenic uses. So just to give you the upfront bit about it, um, most of the mandrake root that you're going to see like in little occult stores or botanicas that say mandrake root on it is actually not mandrake root. It is or a true mandrake root, it, uh, especially if it's like five bucks for an ounce or something like that. It's actually something called may apple, which is, I gotta look up the, the scientific name because I don't remember it. Potophyllum palati, palatum, which is from the Berber Id, Idiosii family, whereas European mandrake is Mandragora officianarum, and there's different species of mandrake, and that's from the Solanaceae family. So, as you can see, this is where knowing the botanical names uh, or the scientific names comes in handy. And just having that, uh, a little bit of that knowledge. So when you buy actual European mandrake root, which is actually really hard to find, um, it's also very expensive. It's going to be more like $25 an ounce, and it's going to be like a whole root, whereas, or like a piece of a whole root, where at, and it's very hard. So whereas um, the bay apple or American mandrake is kind of chopped up into little woody bits. So... That's visually how you can tell the difference. Mandrake root, true uh, European mandrake root is very hard. Like when I use it, I have to put it in like a plastic bag and sit there on the floor and smash it with a hammer because I can't actually, I don't have anything. Like I even have like a little handsaw and I can't even like, well, because the pieces are like this big and it's hard with like a handsaw to cut it. Um, so I usually have to smash it with a hammer um, to use it like in my flying ointments and things like that. So. Um, to talk a little bit about mandrake root. Now, this is one of the ones, I'm not going to go super deep into the lore because there is a ton of lore about European mandrake. You know, it's one of the uh, theogenic herbs that was, you know, used in the traditional um, witches' flying ointments and things like that. And it still is used today. Um, and it also does have some therapeutic use as well. So the primary use of mandrake root is it's it is it's an aphrodisiac that boosts the libido obviously it's used in love magic um it's also um it's also can be used to amplify other elements in spell work um there's there's some there's some herbs and resins like dragon's blood is one that's like that that sort of boost the the power of other elements of like uh, other herbs and things like that so um, it's associated with, uh, the planet Mercury and fire. Um, it's now the chemical composition of, it, and this is that the, the, all parts of the mandrake plant are toxic. Uh, the root is what's primarily used, um, in preparation, in, you know, various preparations and things like that. So, but it's primarily, again, like most of the Solana CE, uh, botanical family members is high in atropine, high cosamine, and scopolamine. And the atropine one is what dilates the pupils, and that's, some, that's something that's used, like if you've, if you've been to the eye doctor and had your eyes dilated, it's, they're using atropine, and, and some of those things are used in uh, you know, uh, anesthesia and, sur and uh, surgical procedures. So, but therapeutically, Magic root can be used for different types of like joint muscular pain or even nerve pain. It, it's slightly sedative, so it can help with you know sleep issues, anxiety, stress, and you know and because it's an entheogenic herb, it's got that sort of spiritual euph euphoric quality to it. So it's also often used um, in sex magic preparations. And when I talk about sex magic and not talk about spicing up the bedroom because, you know, whatever. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a practice within magic where you're using the energy 
of the act of sex and orgasm to, as part of the, ma to amplify the magic spell. Sometimes you use the fluids and things like that. There's, I'm not gonna get into that. Maybe I'll do a whole other video on sex magic at some point, but that's just sort of the in the nutshell. Now granted, it does have aphrodisiac properties to it, but when we're talking about sex magic, we're talking about a particular branch of magic there. So, now to look at Mayapple, which is American Mandrake, which is what you're probably going to see in, in stores. Um, the only, the only, I've only used it for like protection spells. Um, it's much more toxic actually than European Mandrake Root. And it's also, if you're going to use it, it's a purgative. So you um, might have some digestive issues such as nausea and vomiting. So that's not something I would want to put into a flying ointment or make a tincture or flower essence out of. So that's why it's important to kind of know some of this information. Because if you're just like running, because I mean, I didn't even know. Like one of my friends was like, oh, make sure the mandrake root you have is European because everything else on the store is all is this American mandrake root and I started looking at him like wow well that's some shit <laughs> so you know if you're just using it like in a spell bottle or something or for protection great whatever don't use it to make flying ointments and tinctures and things like that it's not what it's for unless you like vomiting so there's a lot of different like species of mandrake so the, the most typical is, is Mandragora officinarium. Sometimes you'll see ma Mandragora aut autum autumnalis, or it's a variation of the species. Because if you ever see um, a scientific name like Mandragora officinarium VAR autumnalis, VAR just means variation. So, um, fun little plant science information there for you. So, the history of the mandrake root, and it's very steeped, uh, because it was native to Europe, so it's very steeped in U European, Western European uh, witchcraft lore and things of that nature. So even back hundreds of years ago, it was used for its psychoactive and aphrodisiac properties. So, and in, which is flying ointments. Since we're talking about mandrake root, typically the most psychoactive part of it is the root, but the whole plant is poisonous. Um, I th you think you can make uh, mandrake flower essences, so I'd imagine if you were doing that, you'll be using like the leaves and flowers from it versus the root. Um, although if you make a tincture, you would be using the root from it. And it's important to mention that these can be toxic when ingested. So if you are using, if you want to ingest something like mandrake root tincture or some or flower essence, make sure it's made by someone who knows what they're doing because you don't want to die. Because, <laughs> like, some people, like, yeah, there's some recipes and stuff I've seen where we're adding it to, like, wine and stuff. So, as I mentioned in the video I did on Brumanzia and Detora, is when you're working with toxic plants, you need to know the LD50, which is the lethal dose at which it would kill 50% of the people who had it, who had taken it. Now, that's going to range... Um, mostly that's ingesting it topically. I don't think you can really overdose on it. Um, unless you were like allergic to it or allergic to like scopolamine or atropine or something that was in it. So, um, but I, you're not gonna, the toxicity isn't going to be as such. More often than not, when people, when you see like bad trip reports and stuff like that from, like Datura and, and, and Brumanzia, Angel's Trumpet, and things like that. It's from people from eating them or, make, or making teas or brews and stuff and not really know what, they, what they're doing. Because a lot of these, have, especially with some of these plants that were native to like South America and, the, and Mesoamerica and things like that, is that there was a shamanic lineage attached to it that knows how to work with these sacred plants. And, you know... If you're just some dumbass looking to trip balls and don't know what you're doing, I advise against it. Because that's where people end up in the hospital or doing really, really horrible things. And the use of mandrake root doesn't just, didn't just pop up a hundred year, a few hundred years ago in, in Western Europe. It does go back that, you know, thousands of years to like 
the Assyrian em Empire and things like that, Mesopotamia. You know, it was used and associated with different deities. Um, like, I think it was, what was I mentioned? Like, it's associated because of its association with love magic. So it's associated with, like, Aphrodite, Astarte, Hathor, etc. So, anyways, so the book doesn't really have anything. This is, uh, the book that I'm referring to is the Encyclopedia of Psychoactive Plants, Ethnopharmacology and Its Applications. So... So the reference I found in the book um, to American Mandrake is that it actually points out here um, all the different plants that were used as a substitute for or to counterfeit um, true mandrake root. So among that is the American mandrake root, which is the Podophyllum palladum. Even belladonna root was used, calamus root, carrot roots, glangle root, ginseng, um, orchids, and a whole bunch of other ones that were used as well. So, so a little further information about May, May apple or Podophyllum palladum, American mandrake quote, um, is that uh, it's native to North America, hence American mandra mandrake as opposed to European mandrake. Um, The root was used as an amulet um, by uh, the indige indigenous populations of the Americas. Um, some believe it's psychoactive, but it contains no known psychoactive constituents. Only toxic glycos glycosides and podophyllin. Um, so yeah, not something you want to play around with. So this video was a little faster than the one I did before. Um, I was covering two entirely different species, uh, genus and species in the last video, so it was a little bit longer. So this will be a little bit shorter. So hopefully the rest of the videos I'm doing on like uh, entheogenic plants and stuff will be a little shorter for your viewing pleasure. But um, like I said, uh, in especially like as an herbalist, like I have trusted sources where I get a lot of my plant material from and especially when it comes to something like mandrake root that is counterfeited or and other things are sold as mandrake root that aren't mandrake root um that's something that's really important to me that i have an, a source for that because as i mentioned i live in a city and it's really freaking hard to grow things and mandrake roots get really big um and i just don't have the space in my backyard for it so um, I probably have like a 10 by 10 foot backyard, maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. So mandrake root, and to recap, great aphrodisiac, great for love magic. It's got psychoactive elements to it. Um, I like it. Um, I've mixed it in a couple of the blends that I've used in the Hedgewitch one with Datura Anoxia and Belladonna. And in Beyond the Matrix with those three with a uh, black henbane as well and i do have a, i do have it in a few other of the demonic flying ointments and i did do a flying oil for it recently so um that's the mandrake root in a nutshell i'm not going too much into all the historical lore about about like all the all the all the stuff with you know because that, that's like a whole other thing in and of itself. Um, I'm just kind of going more into what it is, how it's used, and don't die, please. Um, so, anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. And thank you once again to my Patreon supporters. Love you all.